Um, gosh, I'm okay, I'm so sorry, folks. Thank you for sticking around. We do have viewers still. That's so great. And that big technical difficulty. Uh, I promise you, the next interview we sit down and do is going to be done off of, uh, off of MacBook Pro. I'm, I will invest in Tesh TV because I love what we're doing here. And we just had a PC crash. That was a big headache. And um, welcome back. We got Larry Hankin with us. Uh, this is probably the third segment. Yes, this is the third segment. So if you're just tuning into this, go back and catch segments one and two and get caught up to speed. All right. We got Scarlett Savage with us. I'm Tyler Raven. All right. Uh, I wanted to fix this side a while ago. Might as well get that talking stick credit in there. We're at the talking stick in Venice, California, my favorite coffee shop. I dare you to find a better coffee shop anywhere. Um, and uh, and we were, gosh, you know, we were talking about um, Laverne and Shirley. And Shirley. Oh, yeah, I got Laverne and Shirley, right, right, right. That's, that was a that's, that's, that's another one where the producer, Gary Marshall, um, I picked, uh, uh, the, the scene was I pick her up. And then I said, I, I come on to him. Now, Penny Marshall <laughs> is um, a really, um, he's a, ve a very, uh, back in the day, she was, she's a really good director now. But back in the day, she was a really physical comedian. Yeah. She, she liked to do physical stick and stuff. So um, she, um, we worked out where, you know, I would be chasing her around and maybe try to get her on the couch or something. And um, um, the, the producer came down. And we had worked out some really funny stuff because I, I I knew her, we were friends. So we worked out some really funny stuff. And the producer comes down and he goes, "What are you doing?" And I said, "Well, you know, I'm picking her up at home, but I don't want to go out with her. I just want to stay here on the couch, <laughs> kind of grab at her." Want to stay in with her? <laughs> yeah. And, and, and he says, "You you can't do that." I go, "Watch. Well, she's a star. You can't touch the star." I so why? You, you, you're, you're touching the story. You're playing the boyfriend. What are you? Yeah. Well, it wasn't even a boyfriend. It was just a date. A, a, oh, he was, was a driver. A, a date who was trying to come on. Right, right. And, um, uh, but <laughs> touch her. She was the one who came up with the idea. You that know? surprised me. So um, she doesn't have a problem with it, but the producer does. Which was her older brother, I think. Oh well, there you go. No idea, you know. <laughs> Yeah, it was a role. Well, yeah. I guess that's what was going on. I'm thinking. But I mean, <laughs> there's things that go on, that, you know, that have nothing to do with anything. It's, you know, you got to kind of well, they adapt. Yeah, you know, yeah. this this because commercial TV, they, uh, in my opinion, and they, yeah. Roseanne was the, like, in my opinion, the first to bring in reality TV. You know, a, a sitcom, real life. It was, it was real life. You know, it wasn't pretty up. You know, and you know, all the family did that too, to an extent. But you know, some of these fluffy, you know. Sitcoms, you know, they got a, they got a, a product label to watch out for, and all this, and and, and yeah. Ted TV, it's real life raw, and this is what I want to capture, and, and that's like another thing I started to talk with you is we didn't we didn't prep you or anything like that, and so you're free to do whatever you want here, Larry. You you, you want to go tackle Scarlet over there? <laughs> no. Actually, I don't know. I'm 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 not small. It would take teams of people working in shifts no, to tackle Penny. Penny came up with the idea. I'm just teasing, but Penny Marshall, that's I've always. So I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to hear time. this story because it was never aired that way, right? So I get to hear this little private version. No, because they had to rewrite the scene, and we had been rehearsing it for three days before he came down to watch. You know, they come down to yeah. watch. But it kind of contrasts with the with the uh, John Houston scene because he was saying to the casting director, "Don't touch my actor." And he was a producer coming down and saying, don't touch my star. Right. But it was the same thing, but totally different. One was in fact and one wasn't. Yeah, I mean, probably, yeah. So uh, so that's when I started to study and bend my own characters, thinking, maybe I should just do this myself. <laughs> and then when digital started to come out, and YouTube started to come out, uh -huh. you can. You can now shoot a movie by going to uh, you know Best Buy. You just buy stuff off the shelf. And you can make um, the equivalent of Lawrence of Arabia if you want it. Look yeah. at the kids who did the musical version of Harry Potter. Uh, Darren Chris, he's a huge star now. And his, he and his college friends, they, they wrote Harry Potter into a musical. He's one of the stars of Glee now. He's huge. Wow. Um, because, yeah, I wanted to, uh, speaking of, you know, writing your own characters, we've discussed this a bit, but I did not enough. My my opinion was the uh, your film debut night here of Emmett Dina. Um, oh, that was kind of cool. 
you packed this house. This was, I've never seen so many people in the talking stick. Really? I, I've been here five months now with the talking stick. I arrived that's here. That's interesting. Is he? Okay, now that's the, see, I looked at it totally different. Oh, really? Totally, How did you look totally at it? Different. Well, first of all, I didn't realize that I packed the place. I mean, I did. I mean, there was no. But but I wanted people room. hanging from the rafters. <laughs> you could. That you was, could. That was, and nobody was hanging from the rafters. Uh, so to me, it was a failure. Chad wanted okay, it. But, wanted but it was <laughs> all the all the seats were taken. And there, there was, was a standing. Of people there, standing in the back. Okay, so that's the But also, I had uh, I had spent uh, a couple of bucks uh, putting an ad in the uh, the. Uh, Venice Beach, beach Oh, yeah, yeah, the beach head. The beach head. Yeah. Yeah, Venice Beach. So I had a, an ad, a color ad, in the Venice Beach head. Um, and I did, I, I think I did a radio interview, and I was telling people, and I was handing out, you know, flyers on the street. But everybody, or at least 90%, as I perceived it, it is all perception. As I perceived it when I came in, the only people I saw were it was filled with friends. Mm -hmm. And I was very disappointed because friends are not going to tell you the truth. They're going to clap. You know, they're your friends, man. Right. Hey. Right. And I wanted to see what strangers thought of this. You friends. know what? Actually, that would be an honest reading. So I was very disappointed because all my friends showed up. Right. Ah. That's why I like being the playwright. You can be in the audience and hear what people really think. Yeah, you know? so so I was kind of disappointed. I wanted to be back to told me nobody I knew. I was going to say, uh, it, I guess it was and all so, your friends because it felt like a Hollywood party over here, you know. We had to, well, then, you know, they were, they were nice and very supportive. Now, there was some strangers way in the back, and that's where I was sitting with. Right. So, uh, the, the girl, the... Yeah, who had typed up the, who does my typing and stuff, it's my scripts. She had invited her friends. Now she's a young girl, she's about, I don't know, in her 20s or something like that. And she has a lot of teenage friends and, and, and people her age. So they came, there's about 10 or 20 in the back there, standing in the back. Uh, so the, I didn't know them, they had never seen them. But they really dug it. And that that was like a really good club. They started a fan club and everything. So that was kinda that was kinda cool. I really got that stuff. I was going to tell you because you were back there and we used to have a couch in the talking stick and that couch was here and this place was, was this place was redesigned for that movie night and and I'm, there was uh, many of the regular talking stick people here that we see all the time at least 10, 15 at Oh really? Well that's cool. See, I didn't oh, see yeah. All I saw was no. familiar faces. And yeah, you're, so you had your own little party back there and the, uh, <laughs> down on this wall but I, no, I remember seeing um, a lot of our regulars in here, because there's like 15 regulars here, called the Sticksters, you know, there's a Stickster, there's a Stickster, I'm a Stickster, you know, um, and, and we were all here on that night, and, oh, cool. and, uh, and it was back, this place was back, and it was it awesome, was, uh, because everyone laughed, I mean, it was like, everyone got your Yeah, stuff. there was a Hollywood, um, there was one Hollywood producer, big, big Hollywood producer, that came, uh, I invited her. Uh, oh, the the uh, producer of Monk, you know, the yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because I had done a Monk uh, series, and I also did another program of Monk years ago. So I just invited her. And she, uh, and she, she brought guests, and, and she liked it. So, yeah, it went over really well. But I want to I wanted to... I wanted to see what um, uh, a house full of people who didn't know me. Right. So next time we don't invite so, anybody. So, well, oh, well, there you go. Know. Good That's point. Right. And on that point, we're going to uninvite you for just a minute, but we invite you to come right back. we got to take a break and reset the recording. Okay, thanks for watching. We'll be right back.